the creation engine did nothing wrong. It's very popular right now to point at Bethesda Game Studios' shortcomings and say, it's because they're still using the creation engine. That engine is 20 years old. People will go back and explain that the creation engine is actually Gamebryo. They will say it was used back in Morrowind. And if you haven't caught on yet, this video is actually Gamebryo did nothing wrong, or perhaps Netimerse did nothing wrong. And, well, what Bethesda is doing wrong with it, because they're doing a lot wrong. So Gamebryo began its life as Netimerse but rebranded itself to Gamebryo. So we'll be calling Gamebryo Netimerse 2.0 for simplicity's sake. I'm sure someone out there will go, that's wrong! I don't care. The Gamebryo or Netimerse 2.0, the engine was designed primarily for online games. Let that sink in, Gamebryo was an MMO engine. Now I've been saying that Gamebryo and the creation engine are basically the same for years now. You can go to live stream archives uh, dating back a couple years and you can see me saying that. This would make the creation engine effectively Netimerse 3.0 or Gamebryo 2.0, whatever you want to call it. It shares a massive amount of elements from its predecessor. And whilst we can rebrand it, relabel it, maybe even change some components, at the end of the day, it still has the same foundation. It shares so many elements. I mean, there are some things that have been renamed here and there, but for the most part, they're the same. When Bethesda said they can make worlds really easily and modders really know it, they mean that because they've been using it for a long, long time. Now, before Bethesda went and burned away all its goodwill with the community, this engine was a particular topic that I like to bring up now and again. I was met with resistance, like, There is no original code in the creation engine! Countless people have told me it, but this was the most recent picture I was able to find of a YouTube comment saying that. There is no Gamebryo code in the creation engine, and there hasn't been for a while. However, when we look back at no-clip interviews for Fallout 76, they mentioned they had to rip out Morrowind code from Fallout 4. I suspected this long beforehand because Oblivion, Skyrim, and Fallout 4 all contain some of the same bugs as Morrowind that have never been fixed. Hell, I mean, we can go into Elder Scrolls V, the executable for Skyrim, and see Gamebryo hooks. The creation engine is packed full of Gamebryo hooks. So now that we've established Netimmerse 3.0 or Gamebryo 2.0, whatever you want to call it, let's discuss how Bethesda has used it. Have you ever played Elder Scrolls Online? Do you know what engine Elder Scrolls Online uses? It's not the creation engine. It's not Gamebryo or Netimmerse. I had no idea until I looked this up a little while ago. But it turns out they developed it originally in the Hero Engine, but forked it off into its own custom code base after Hero Engine failed to live up to the expectations of what it could do for ESO. But that was a little bit of worthless trivia, because the real reason I mentioned Elder Scrolls Online was to bring up the best part of that particular game, Cyrodiil PvP. Cyrodiil is a battlefield where the three main factions struggle for control of various territories, keeps, farms, things like that. They use siege engines to knock down fortress walls, invade, kill the defenders, and take over the fort for their own faction. It is an ever-shifting battlefield, and truly the best part of Elder Scrolls Online. The reason Cyrodiil PvP is so great is because the person primarily responsible for the development of Dark Age of Camelot's PvP, he was responsible for working on Cyrodiil PvP. Do you know what engine Dark Age of Camelot was built on? Gamebryo. MMORPGs were Netimmerse 2.0's original purpose, after all. Dark Age of Camelot was an extremely fun and well-put-together video game and shared practically none 
of the issues that plagued Morrowind. Running into other Game Brio games, we have Warhammer Online, Rift, Civilization IV, Bully, Catherine. The issues that are in Bethesda games are not present in other Game Brio games, but they were present in Morrowind, the first of Bethesda's Netimmerse series. This is important to establish that we know Game Brio itself did nothing wrong. And Bethesda did everything wrong. Gamebryo features loading of cells and, or chunks that will never go away. From Morrowind to Oblivion to Skyrim, Fallout 3, New Vegas, Fallout 4. Yeah, technically New Vegas is made by Obsidian, but it's done using Bethesda's toolset, built on that foundation. Either way. To Fallout 4 to Fallout 76, it always uses chunks. But other games use that kind of system. Many other games use cell-based loading or chunk-based loading in open worlds just fine. That said, Bethesda has piled stuff on top of it. From Morrowind to Oblivion to Skyrim. Bethesda just can't attach a good scripting system to save their lives. I shudder to think of what's going on behind the scenes in Fallout 76 because they had to rip out all the single player oriented code. What did they replace it with? I have no idea and that frightens me. Why does it frighten me? Because of what I know. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on Morrowind or Oblivion scripting system or Fallout 3 scripting system, but I will tell you that from my observations as an end user who makes tweaks and changes and occasionally um, installs mods that it appears that those scripting engines appear to be made out of wet tissue paper. However, I do know a little thing, a few little things, about Skyrim and Fallout 4 scripting systems, the Papyrus Virtual Machine. It's ill-equipped to handle the amount of scripting for the NPCs, the player, and the world all at once. When people look at my What If Skyrim Was Good video series, and agree with me, yeah, the world should have been bigger, or yeah, there should be larger cities, or yeah, there should be more NPCs. You have to understand that the functionality of Papyrus is nearly at its limit within the vanilla game. Install a mod like War Zones or Sands of Time, and watch as the fireworks go off. The game explodes under the pressure of those NPC groups. You ever wonder why the Skyrim Civil War was never actually a civil war? That's why. Fallout 4 and Skyrim Special Edition have improved the throughput a little bit, being a 64-bit aware program. It's able to allocate memory much more efficiently than the old 500 megabyte chunk followed by the 250 megabyte chunks that it used to handle. It's much better than that now. Unfortunately, the problem persists regardless. So this scripting engine being abused has been bolted onto the otherwise pretty damn stable Netimmerse. I mean, Gamebryo. I mean, Creation Engine. Now, I know some people are thinking, how can you call that engine stable when you put a corpse in a doorway and close the door, watch the physics go insane? Oh, here's the rub. The physics aren't actually a part of Netimmerse, Gamebryo, or the Creation Engine. The physics are a licensed separate engine called Havoc. Now, I could be sitting here naming countless games that use Havoc without the insane issues that Bethesda games have. But I think you can do your own research on that. Just do a search for Havoc physics in games. There are tons and tons of games that use them without things going crazy. You'll notice countless mods out there, such as Realistic Ragdolls and Force. Modders have begun working on it, but again, they're working within the wet cardboard box that is the Bethesda game, so it's always going to be wonky in some weird way that the modders can't completely fix. However, actual game developers can use Havoc. They can use it well. Havoc is not the joke Bethesda has turned it into. Next up, we have game speed tied to the frame rate. Look up the Skyrim high FPS fix. If modders can create a slapdash solution, I'm sure a fully-fledged studio could find a more stable one if they were more competent. But looking at Bethesda, it was clear 
that they're developing for consoles with a static frame rate in mind. It never occurred to them that people would run, run the game at a higher frame rate. Now, on the topic of FOVs or field of view, looking at how their view model, that is the hands holding either the gun or the sword or whatever, they, they become awkward looking and even break off the ends of the, the arms as you increase the FOV. The view model does not change with the field of view because you were meant to only have one field of view in all these games. Despite an overwhelming number of PC gamers changing their FOVs to a higher value. It isn't to just give you more view space. You see a lot of people get motion sickness in games that have a low FOV. Humans have a much larger FOV in their natural vision than the restricted view in a Bethesda game. Now, I personally don't get motion sickness when I'm playing a game, but I do play many games with a particular girl who get terribly sick if the FOV in, say, Skyrim or Fallout 4 isn't 90 or above. In many games, FOV 90 is the default. But again, to Bethesda, it's just another unrealistic setting they didn't plan for and they have no desire to support. Now, you'll notice I've several times said that they've designed games for the console, and yet, for a very long time, PC has been the hub for Bethesda games as far as modding goes. The longevity of Bethesda games, as Todd Howard put it, comes from the modding community, and the modding community is based on PC. That's where the creation kit is. Well, the thing is that back in Morrowind, and Oblivion, we had the construction set come out with the game. Well, in newer Bethesda games, they've released the construction set or creation kit online later because they've been designing the game for console first and they kind of put the, the finishing of the creation kit off till later. The PC versions of Skyrim and Fallout 4 are just ports. You can tell based on the user interface, which is designed for consoles, you'll try something like, say, Sky UI, and you'll be amazed where all the PC features get reintroduced to Skyrim as far as the user interface goes, and it's amazing. But it's clear Bethesda wants to make all their games uniform across all platforms. Now let's go over a lot of common community concerns. First of all, textures. High quality texture packs exist. However, Bethesda's official high quality texture pack for Skyrim was loaded with bugs. They were unoptimized, broken textures in many cases. The community came out with official optimized versions of the Bethesda textures, and the community also came out with much higher quality textures, which were again better optimized than Bethesda's high definition texture pack. Using Bethesda's high definition texture pack is just a recipe for disaster. Someone's gonna mention foliage, how trees and bushes and grass all look very low quality. Well, there are high quality foliage mods as well. However, the higher quality foliage mods actually do stress your computer. Why do they stress your computer? Well, in video games in general, optimization is a big deal. While the foliage, the high quality foliage is optimized, it does still require a little more resource. The problem is when you're replacing one to one, Bethesda was using a lot, a lot of low quality assets and they were rendering it all at once in a fairly unoptimized way. The result is that having higher quality trees or bushes, it will just slow down your game. Now this is compounded if you add a mod that completely overhauls all of the landscaping and adds more foliage and denser forests and things like that, then things get even worse. It's not that the engine can't support it, it's that the Bethesda game, the landscaping, everything about it wasn't built that way. They would probably need to make changes to their renderer if they wanted to place the Elder Scrolls in a jungle. The renderer they started with in Oblivion was ill-equipped to handle a jungle. So they changed the storyline and turned Cyrodiil into European fantasy land. 
So yes, textures and foliage both could have been done better, period. But Bethesda's ineptitude meant that that wasn't going to happen. Someone's going to mention shaders, of course. Shaders are done better in a countless number of games. The thing is that someone attached a bunch of DLL libraries to the game, called it ENB, and it looks better just on the face of being ENB. Unfortunately, that is an external set of libraries, meaning it has to pile on top of the existing graphical display engine of the game. If many of the ENB libraries were better integrated into the game and optimized for the game, we wouldn't have these issues as they are presented. Now, a lot of people will look at, say, Real Vision ENB's Ultra High preset and be like, well, this is just for taking screenshots. I mean, the performance is garbage. And you'd be right. You would be entirely right if we were using the high-end preset. However, there are lower-end ENB presets which still look beautiful. And I'm bringing this up for an important reason. Because these low-end ENB presets display things like God rays, uh, shaders, lens flares, all of the things you'd expect from, say, a game like Fallout 76. But they do so at a much lower performance hit. In other words, when Bethesda implemented the ENB-like features, they did it wrong. Now, I know another popular thing to say is, well, if you use an ENB and high-quality texture packs and foliage mods and all of this stuff at once, and you throw more NPCs in there, you're going to make the game a glitchy, buggy mess. The problem is, Bethesda games have always been unstable. They've never truly been stable at their core. The game has always been built on that unstable foundation. It's just Bethesda's been doing a balancing act, making it just stable enough to have an experience that is mostly and sometimes entirely crash-free. In short, Bethesda's got a terrible case of the good enoughs. And this shows a lack of pride. I'll discuss that a little bit later. Each Bethesda game has been built on the previous game. They took Gamebryo, a perfectly well-functioning engine, and said, we're going to bolt a bunch of things to it. They got a physics engine, they got a scripting engine, and they implemented these things in an extremely shoddy way. No other games using these same or very similar systems are having these problems. But it's because of how Bethesda went about using them. How Bethesda went about implementing them. Now, when they had problems, major problems, they got complacent and refused to tear down those systems. In Morrowind, they didn't have time. Morrowind was Bethesda's swan song. What I mean to say is, Battlespire was a semi-successful game. Not great. Redguard was a failure. It reviewed poorly, the controls were awful, it was made for niche hardware, 3DFX Glide. Not everyone had a voodoo card back then. So you get two financial failures coupled with them, Bethesda starting to work on a space game called 10th Planet. And they actually contracted a Hollywood studio to start working on 10th Planet. Do you know how much money they dumped into that thing? They diversified too quickly. They had a team for Red Guard, they had a team for Battlespire, and they had a team for 10th Planet. And they burned through all their money. They reached too far too fast. So the ZeniMax Media Group was formed, they bought Bethesda, and this was Bethesda's last chance. And they nailed Morrowind using Gamebryo. But any kind of real deep-seated issues with how Morrowind was being made, couldn't be addressed during Morrowind's development. They had to just say, good enough, good enough, good enough, good enough. If they burned through all the investment capital that they were given, Bethesda was gone. There was no way around this. Morrowind had to be successful. So Morrowind exceeded expectations, was doubly, triply, many times more successful than they thought it was going to be. From there... Bethesda took the core systems of Morrowind, attached a new scripting engine, 
attached a new renderer and made Oblivion. But Oblivion was built on the back of Morrowind. And yeah, they got rid of Oblivion scripting engine in favor of Papyrus for Skyrim, but a lot of Oblivion's issues are still present in Skyrim. Because they built one game on top of another on top of another. They got complacent, they refused to tear everything down to the base engine and build it back up. I don't think Bethesda should get an entirely new engine. The scripting engine needs to be replaced and whoever is responsible for implementing Havoc physics into their games needs to either be replaced or educated by people who have implemented Havoc well. Now I know most of these statements don't mean anything to the end user, but let me address the developers out there for a moment. Remember when I mentioned Pride before? How little of it Bethesda has? Fallout 76 had a problem. They had a photo mode where when you enter photo mode, it will let you take a picture of your character. In the key bindings for the game, they allow you to rebind all the keys for PC, including the photo mode button. Well, it turned out that in the SWF, or the, the Flash file that governs the user interface for the photo mode, they left out a hook that allows the bottom bar of photo mode to update when a key is rebound. So instead of saying whatever your current keybind is, it just said, press space to take photo. This was a graphical user interface problem by a Flash or SWF file that was compiled up for the base game. Rather than fixing this SWF file, this, this user interface Flash-based file, the developers thought it would be a better use of their time to remove the key binding from the key binds menu for photo mode because they didn't want to fix the user interface issue. To repeat really quick, I, I really think Bethesda has just a bad case of good enoughs, which was born from where Bethesda was going to live or die based on making that Morrowind release. But when the base of your game works well enough, and then the physics work well enough, and the scripting system works real well enough, you can throw anything you want on top of that, right? You can just build on top of it. No. It's that lack of pride I'm talking about. Let's call Bethesda Games a house. The foundation is Netimmerse, Gamebryo, Creation Engine, whatever you want to call it. It's a strong, sturdy foundation. Then we've got the flooring and the load-bearing supports, which were put together by shoddy craftsmen who came in later. But screw the consequences, because even though we've got shoddy load-bearing supports, we're going to put a second floor on this. And that's why Fallout 76 is a buggy, crashy mess. I enjoyed that crashy mess for 60 hours, roughly. But it crashed over four times during that uh, period. It seemed the higher level, more active the areas were, the more prone to crashes it was. See, Bethesda Game Studios are not engine designers. They didn't make Netimmerse, Gamebryo. They didn't create the Papyrus scripting engine. They didn't create Havoc. They cobbled all of this stuff together at a far lower level of competency than their rivals in the gaming industry have. And they would have gotten spanked a lot sooner if other studios were looking to create open world sandbox experiences like Skyrim or Fallout 4. But Bethesda has had a monopoly on that corner of the market. There was nothing quite like a Bethesda sandbox game. And I mean that because... Even The Witcher 3, which I consider to be a masterpiece of video games. And I don't even like The Witcher very much. Like, the books, the character, the earlier games. And I, I can sit here, not liking that, and say that The Witcher 3 is a masterpiece because it is that well done as a video game. Other people will disagree with me. That's fine. Personal tastes are subjective. But despite that, there still is nothing like a Bethesda sandbox game. And as a result, Bethesda has garnered an immense amount of goodwill. And people have given them a free pass for their technical ineptitude. What should have been shame on you, don't you guys have pride as developers? Became endearing 
quirky bugs that we like to make videos of and we laugh at. Ha ha, look at those bugs. When they stepped into the Ark and Rust field of survival games, they now have rivals to compare their games to. Yeah, Ark and Rust probably don't have nearly as well-crafted landscapes and buildings and, and micro-stories built into quests in various areas. I don't think that a straight one-to-one -one comparison is fair, but that's what they're getting. Their rivals in the industry don't crash as frequently, don't stutter, and fairly well support make-your-own-fun to a higher degree. So while the engine itself is pretty out of date. They have the source code. They can change out the renderer. They can fix many of their bugs. They could get rid of the user interface as it is right now. They could fix the physics being tied to the frame rate. They could fix the physics in general. They could fix all these things, but they've chosen not to. And most of it is due to a terrible case of good enoughs. And that good enough mentality has snowballed into what we have here, the Fallout 76. So my friends, Netimmerse, Gamebryo, it did nothing wrong. And Bethesda did everything wrong. Changing engines won't fix it because Bethesda is Bethesda. Who's laughing now? Who's laughing now? Who's laughing now? Who's laughing now? Go back to the chess club.